The next pair of topics we consider for affine varieties is smoothness and normality. In this part, we'll give the general story of smoothness and normality, and then the next part we'll consider what it means for torque varieties and give more examples. Now, if we're considering affine varieties over the complex numbers, okay, here we're taking zero sets of polynomials, Okay, well, these polynomials satisfy a holomorphic condition. So when things are nice, we're actually looking at complex manifolds. Okay, and then you can pull back. These will also be smooth manifolds. So depending on our setting, we can farm problems out to algebraic topology, differential geometry, complex geometry, and so on. What that leaves for algebraic geometry okay, is to study where smoothness breaks down. Okay, so that's going to be the study of singular points. Now, for examples, okay, if we just go to the real case, okay, singular points show up, for instance, when we have cusps or when we have self-intersections. Now, we want to get a handle on what it means to be a singular point. So for that, okay, well, Assumption we'll have for the rest of this is going to be that V is an irreducible affine variety okay, inside CN. First, we'll consider the case where we have vanishing of a single polynomial. Now, if we go back to multivariable calculus, okay, we can define tangent spaces there when we have implicitly defined functions just by looking at the gradient. So a multivariable calculus result was that the gradient of our function is always perpendicular to the level sets. Okay, if they're level curves or level surfaces, we always have perpendicularity here, and that's how you define your tangent planes at points. Okay, so you have your gradient points away from your surface, and then the perp to that gives you the tangent plane. Okay, and recall, okay, I want to go from the real to the complex picture, so none of the definitions change, just the notation. Okay, so our gradient, okay, we have our polynomial, this is just going to be given by loading up with all the different partials and our different variables. Okay, and to emphasize complex, we'll use z as a variable. Now, that gives us definition, first definition of our tangent space. Okay, if we're in the complex category, we're talking about holomorphic tangent vectors. Okay, so that's what we get when we have a single polynomial. And then if I have many polynomials, Okay, so we have our variety defined by F1 through Fs, where they vanish. We're just going to take the intersection of the tangent spaces. What about singular points? If our variety is defined by a single polynomial, then we're just checking where the gradient is equal to zero, and with our definition, the tangent space is everything. Otherwise, if our variety is defined by polynomials F1 through Fs, we refer questions of smoothness and singularity to the Jacobian matrix. So the Jacobian to P, I'll take the gradients, stack them on top of one another, and then evaluate at P. Then the tangent space at P is just the null space of the Jacobian to P. Okay, so here we want all vectors in Cn that are perpendicular to all gradients at the same time. Okay? And then we can translate this vector space to the point P. We can now define smoothness and singularity First, the dimension of V, okay, what we'll do here, we'll consider all chains of varieties inside of V okay, under inclusion, and then the dimension is going to be the length of the longest chain. Then we'll say point P in V is smooth if and only if the dimension of the tangent space of P is equal to the dimension of V. This condition is equivalent to a rank condition on the Jacobian, so we'll have the rank of the Jacobian of P is just equal to N of our CN, minus the dimension of V. Next, I'll say our variety is smooth if all of its points are smooth, and we'll call a point singular if it's not smooth. Then if we collect all the singular points, they also form an affine variety. Okay, to see that, we know it. we have the defining condition for V itself, and the singular condition, okay, that's going to be vanishing of determinants of minors in our Jacobian. Okay, and so those will be polynomials. So affine variety. For an example, okay, let's consider our usual y squared minus x cubed equal to zero in two space. We take the gradient, I get two y comma minus three x squared. If we check our rank condition, 
Okay, so the rank of this, if we're away from the origin, is going to be equal to 1. And if we take n minus the dimension of v, okay, it's one dimensional, so we get a 2 minus 1 equal to 1. All points off the origin are going to be smooth. On the other hand, at the origin, okay, the rank is equal to 0, which is not equal to 1, so 0, 0 is our only singular point. And there we also note the dimension of the tangent space is equal to 2, so everything. If we want to do algebraic geometry in general, we want a machinery that doesn't depend on special properties of the complex numbers other than algebraic closure. That'll lead us to the definition of Zariski tangent space. This is defined purely using algebra. And the results we get more or less coincide with what we had from before for the complex numbers. Now, because V is irreducible, its coordinate ring is an integral domain, and we can form the field of fractions. So that'll be the rational functions on V. Okay, we know that these functions are only densely defined on V. Okay, so we have to throw away all points where G is equal to zero, but then that's gonna give us an open subset in V. And because V is irreducible, we get densely defined. Now, if we wanna talk tangent spaces, okay, I need a large collection of functions. So before it would have been smooth functions on V, now, I want to consider the local ring at P. Okay, so this is going to be the subset of rational functions on V, which are actually defined at P. So all we want here is that G of P be non-zero. And then this space is big enough to do algebraic geometry. Now, inside of the local ring, we have a unique maximal ideal, just given by where the numerator vanishes. And we'll define Zariski tangent space as the space of linear functionals on, okay, we have our maximal ideal modded out by its square. Okay, and the big question is, what does this mean? Our intuition comes from the case of the complex numbers. We use Taylor polynomials, only instead of using derivatives, we develop using algebraic closure. So that means V is equal to C, Okay, our coordinate ring is just polynomials in one variable. Our rational functions are rational functions in one variable. We pick a point P in the complex plane. Then the maximum ideal is just going to be X minus P times the local ring. Now, see this. If we have an element in the local ring evaluating to zero, that only happens if the numerator evaluates to zero, which means we have a factor of X minus P in the numerator. And so we can pull that out. With that, we're able to do a Taylor expansion of any element in the local ring. Okay, so that just means if we take f over g, evaluate x, okay, g of p is non-zero. I can write that as a zero plus a one x minus p plus x minus p squared times another element of the local ring. See this? Okay, well, first step, I'll let a zero just be equal to f over g evaluated at p. Okay, if we subtract off a zero from f over g, we evaluate a p, we get zero, which means we have to have x minus p as a factor of this. And so we could write that as x minus p times another element of the local ring. We repeat, I let a1 be equal to r1 of p. Now we're gonna take f over g minus a0, divide by x minus p, subtract off an a1. That's another element of our local ring. We evaluate a p, we get zero, and so this has to be equal to x minus p, times another element of the local ring, and so on. Okay, but we only want to go out this far. Now, how do we interpret? If I have an element in the maximal ideal, that means the A0 term is equal to zero. And so what we're left with are these two terms here. Now, the second part is gonna be inside of the square of our maximal ideal. So when I take the quotient, the only thing we have to work with are the A1 terms. That's gonna be just a C. And so we're talking about linear functionals from C to C, and so we have a one-dimensional tangent space here. If we go to Cn for a variety, okay, we can do the same exact expansion here. Okay, it needs a little bit more detail, but the idea is going to be if we take the linear terms in the expansion, now we have n of those instead. So we take the quotient, we're going to get a Cn, linear functionals, okay, we're going to have n dimensions of those. Okay, and so on. 
Our next topic is normality. If an affine variety is not smooth, the next best thing we can hope for is that it's normal. So normality is some measure of singularity. The geometric interpretation of normality is somewhat sophisticated. So here we're just going to give a general overview. And when we get to torque varieties, there's a nice formulation in terms of convex geometry. Algebraically, okay, normality is just the notion of integrality. So let's recall how that works. So if we have A a subring of B, I'll say that X and B is integral over A and B if X satisfies a monic polynomial with coefficients in A. If we collect all these elements, okay, I'll denote that by A prime, that'll be a subring of B, and we call that the integral closure of A and B. And if A equals A prime, then we say that A is integrally closed in B. Now, if V is an irreducible affine variety, okay, definition, we'll say that V is normal if the coordinate ring of V is integrally closed in the field of rational functions on V. For a large source of examples, can we note, if we have a coordinate ring that's a UFD, it's integrally closed, which means that our V is normal in this case. Okay, for instance, CN is normal. Okay, the coordinate ring is just polynomials and n variables, which is definitely a UFD. For an example that's not normal, okay, we have our usual cubic, y squared minus x cubed equal to zero. Here, y over x is a root of the monic polynomial, okay, capital X cubed minus y, but y over x is not in the corner ring, so not integrally closed. Now, a little bit of big picture. Okay, let's take the integral closure of a coordinate ring in the field of rational functions. I'll call that CV prime. That's a C algebra, finitely generated, has no null potence. So that corresponds to some affine variety, which we'll call V prime. Now, the coordinate ring for V sits inside the coordinate ring for V prime. That's going to induce what we call the normalization map. So that's going to give a map from V prime to V. Okay, in the one-dimensional case, complex curves. Okay, there's a whole chapter of that in Griffith's Intro to Algebraic Curves. What we're doing here is a first approximation to V by a normal variety. To finish, we note some facts without proofs. First, we have a theorem that states that okay, smooth implies normal. Here, the converse is false. So there are going to be normal varieties that are not smooth. For instance, if we take variety where xy minus zw vanishes, that's normal, but the origin is a singular point. Okay, and we'll take another look at this example when we do torque varieties. If dimension is equal to 1, okay, we're talking about algebraic curves over the complex numbers, then smooth and normal are equivalent. Finally, theorem, if we have v normal, dimension of v is equal to n, Okay, n bigger than or equal to 2, then the dimension of the variety of singular points, okay, remember that's an affine variety, that's dimension less than or equal to n minus 2. Okay, so here we see that normal says there's a limitation on the size of the variety of singular points relative to the whole variety.